Good morning, Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am grateful for the opportunity technology has afforded us to connect virtually. I could not wiggle out of my current schedule as I would have loved to, so I am thankful. I am also grateful for this vital discourse on democracy and political participation organized by the House of Justice. The rise in political consciousness of Nigerians must be celebrated. After my initial conversations with Mrs. Balasan, I began pondering on what I'd like to leave with you as key reflections. Interestingly, on Monday, November 29, 2022, under the Fixed Politics Initiative, the work study group of which I am co-chair activated the Office of the Citizen Campaign to remind us all that as citizens, we, not political office holders, are the highest office holders in a democracy. This lays further credits to the importance of the topic I will be speaking on today, the role of citizens in a democracy. My cardinal belief is that without the existence of humans who make up the citizenry, there will be no need for government. This is regardless of what the political system may be. In a democracy, the role of citizens assumes even greater significance I like this quote from Michael Moore, an American political activist. And I quote, democracy is not a spectator sport. It's a participatory event. If we don't participate in it, it ceases to be a democracy, end of quote. The Greeks who introduced the concept saw it as a way of governing which depends on the will of the people. Regrettably in Nigeria, however, the will of the people has been muzzled we have strayed far off from the initial ideal to what has been described by Dr. Obi Ezekwesili of the Fixed Politics Initiative as a monopolistic democracy, which is democracy by a powerful group of dominant parties, or oligopolistic in practice, which is a dominant political power manipulated by groups of powerful individuals. The ideal represented in the triangular pillars of democracy has been grossly abused. The triangular pillars of democracy represent agencies such as INEC, the judiciary, and the National Assembly, which collectively make up the regulators of our democracy and sit at the apex of the triangle. At the base are the political class on the left side and the electorate on the right side, who ought to have the power to elect their political leaders. Unfortunately, the political class has, com has completely usurped the power of the citizens, sometimes in collusion with the regulators at the apex. But in many ways, the problem with our democracy lies with us, the people, the citizens. Thankfully, we can also provide the solution. Robert M. Hutchins said, and I quote, the death of democracy is not likely to be an assassination from ambush. It will be a slow extinction from apathy indifference and undernourishment, end of quote. The apathy of the citizens and acquiescence to the corrupt political elite has led to a downward spiral in our democracy. One of our goals, therefore, at the Fixed Politics Initiative is to emerge an enlightened, empowered, and engaged electorate, which we activated for action on Monday. While the first goal is to get citizens involved in the political process, the quality of such participation is even more critical. We often say that the government we institute is a reflection of who we are as a society. It is a reflection of our collective values, beliefs, and aspirations. Therefore, the essence of our participation must be centered on values that will drive the goal of ensuring the representation of the collective goodwill of the people. These values of hard work, collaboration, good character, capacity, competence, and an appreciation and celebration of integrity. We cannot claim to desire good governance, but decide to work for the highest bidder, who we know has no character or capacity. We cannot claim to want good leadership if our participation is based on instant gratification. We must realize that if we treat our votes, your voices, and our influence like products that can be purchased, 
will lose the right of possession the moment it is exchanged for an instant gratification of money or anything else. If we sell our votes, we immediately lose the right to demand what they represent, which is good governance and service from elected officials. It is in our enlightened self-interest to set aside instant gratification that will cost us our rights to a good life and instead critically assess candidates and only support, canvass, and vote for those with a track record of competence, capacity, and character. In order to make the right decision, we must understand the issues, our rights, and even more importantly, our responsibilities. We must also understand the responsibility of the leaders who we are choosing to administer our collective wealth and hold them accountable. For the coming elections, get to know our candidates. Dig into their backgrounds and know their track records. It is good to know that the gubernatorial candidates in Kaduna will be addressing you today as well. I implore you to ask the right questions and listen closely to the responses. And as said often by one of the leading presidential candidates, go and verify. We must also strive for collaboration and unity amongst ourselves as citizens. There is power and wisdom in our collective pursuit for the worthy cause of building a nation that works for all. As we believe that the provisions of the new electoral act will afford us a free and fair election, the winners will be those with the highest number of votes. Our effort, therefore, must go beyond knowing and making the right choice for ourselves. We must also engage and enlighten our fellow citizens. This 2023 elections presents us an opportunity to show that power belongs to the people. As I and many others have opined, the results will have far-reaching consequences on our future. It will either break us completely or set us on the path of recovery. I have chosen to believe that we can get back on track and begin to build again. But we must all play our parts. I have chosen to run to become the governor of the most beautiful state in the world, Enugu State. In the same way, I am challenging you to stand up too. You may not be able to run now if you aren't already, but you can support those of us who are running for office. You can donate to our campaigns, offer strategic advice. You can become food soldiers and engage the grassroots. You can speak up for good governance and for candidates with the character, the capacity and competence in your homes, at your places of work, on your social media and via traditional media if you have that access. You can ensure that your permanent voters card is retrieved from the INEC office close to you and you make plans to use it at the polls encouraging the people in your network to do the same. In his book, Enemies of Society, Paul Johnson said, the true essence of democracy is the ability to punish political failure by votes. If we fail to punish the political failure of the establishment parties by rejecting them at the polls, the only essence of democracy is lost and we can never get good leadership or the dividends of good leadership. There is no doubt that we long for better days in our country and we want the best for our children, grandchildren, and coming generations. This solution lies with us, Nigerian citizen. The ball is in our courts. God bless you. May God help our country. I wish you all successful deliberations. Thank you.